Hello, welcome back to the Spectrosonics on the Sphere tutorial. Today we're dealing with the last of the oscillator zoom pages, and it is the meteus, but um, if we take it slowly, it's not too difficult. This is the granular synthesizer. And what I've done is I've selected a sample sound. You really kind of want to be working with samples in the granular synthesizer. It can process wavetable waves, but this is really where it's at. We've got this sound here, and you can see the wave shape. This is not how the granular appears by default. I've actually set it up by turning everything down as far as I possibly can. This slider over here, I'm going to set that all the way to the left as well. This is going to make the, the granular synthesizer do the least possible amount of work. And having said that, I'm going to turn it on. Let's hear what we've got. So it's very nearly, I'll just turn it up a tiny bit. It's very nearly exactly the same as the original wave, but there's actually a hell of a lot going on under the hood here. See this blue line that's going from left to right? That's called a playhead. So that's basically marking the point on the wave at which the granular synthesizer is currently playing a bit of the sound. But rather than it starting at the beginning and playing the entire thing continuously, the way granular synthesis works is that that wave has been chopped up into literally thousands of tiny slices. It doesn't say anywhere in the documentation how big these slices are, but typically you're operating in small numbers of milliseconds. Um, like standard granular synthesizers give you one to 50 milliseconds or that kind of range. But what we've got is basically a single playhead strobing through this thing, playing sections of the wave one after the other. And with all of the settings set low, it they all join together to make something very closely approximate to the original wave. But if you listen very carefully, those noise pops are like basically sam sample clicks where the end of the previously played wave isn't exactly aligned with the beginning of the new wave and so you get those little those little sample clicks now we can get rid of them very easily because that's what the smoothing knob is all about what that does is overlays an envelope a, a beginning and an end to every single one of these tiny little time sliced played waves. And it basically cross fades all of those individual samples. So now with a little bit of smoothing, those pops go away. Now we're getting something that's very close indeed to our original sound. It's still, you're actually now hearing a little bit of kind of cross fade tremolo as the sound gets quieter and louder, but it's pretty close. But of course, that's not really what we're all about. We want an effect here. We want to hear something different. So let's start pushing the granular and see what it can really do. The first thing that I'm going to do is turn up the intensity. And what this does is reduce the size of each of those grain sizes. So instead of taking a, a snapshot of, let's say, a 200 millisecond slice of time, as we increase the intensity knob, those slices of time are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. But the playhead, the thing that's determining where in the wave the, the, the sound is going to be taken from, is still traveling at exactly the same speed. And so what we're going to get is overlaid waves played on top of each other. And we get this. If I turn smoothing off, you can hear it more dramatically. So you get this really quite nasty kind of broken effect as all of these tiny little slices are kind of stumbling over each other. I'm going to bring the smoothing back in to get rid of those nasty clicks. And now I'm going to increase the grain depth. And what this does is introduces multiple playheads. So instead of just one position in the wave where a sound is being played at any given time. 
we're going to get multiple positions in the wave, each of which is playing the same sized time slice. And we've still got the same linear progression. So each one of those playheads is going to move forwards in time at the same rate, but you're going to have multiple ones of them, which means that from this wave, we're taking basically random positions, multiples of them, and they're all being played back simultaneously. Now I'm going to slow the playhead down. So instead of it going through at effectively real-time speed, I'm going to make it go more slowly. Now this speed control is a little bit odd. Over on the left-hand side, it basically plays through in real time. Over on the right-hand side, it plays backwards in real time. And everywhere in between, it gets slower and slower and slower and slower and slower at exactly 0.5, it's motionless. And then as we go past 0.5, it starts going backwards. I'll show you that in action. You see those blue lines, they're moving forwards. They're still moving forwards, but now they're moving more slowly. And so when the playheads are concentrating on the area of the wave that has the most intense harmonic activity, we're really focusing on it. At 0.5, we're basically motionless. So all of these playheads are playing forwards in time, but then they're not actually getting to progress through the wave. If I make the intensity faster, then the time slices are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Playheads, the the yeah the the playhead start points are moving backwards. The playback of the wave itself is always forwards. So you get this weird kind of thing that you're traveling backwards in time, but you're playing forward moving time slices. A little bit of a brain bender. And now we're starting to get some pretty cool effects. Most of the interest is when the playheads get to this section. So we're just starting to get into the into the territory of having some interesting sounds now. Let's pan them out into the stereo field and see what that does to the effect. So that's what spread does. It's not spreading the waves, the playheads across the wave. It's spreading the playback in the stereo field. Tune, randomly detune each one of those playheads each time the grain triggers it starts playing a new grain you get some random detuning the more we turn this knob up the more dramatic the detune is going to be Obviously, it's, it's got lots of playheads going here. And this is actually something that I should have mentioned earlier, but it is really important to note. Don't think that grain depth, turning the grain depth up, improves the quality. It doesn't necessarily. It's perfectly possible to get awesome sounding granular effects with a low grain depth, because it means those playheads are focusing their attention on that part of the wave, as opposed to if you introduce too many, it just becomes a kind of a generic mush. So I'll turn the grain knob down a little bit and we'll see what that does to the sound. So I've gone back to a 
forward motion now, and all the playheads are strobing forwards through the wave. Now, pitch grains does a different thing to detuning, but it's, it's in the same kind of family because it's dealing with pitch control. What this does is says a number of the playheads that get spawned, these blue lines that we were seeing on the, on the map, some of them are going to turn a different colour. And when you see them turn a different colour, they're going to be playing a different pitch note. And they're going to, the, the, the new note that they're going to play is going to be determined by our interval. So if I set interval to seven semitones, so that all of the, the new pitches are going to be played a perfect fifth above the original tonic, and introduce some pitch grains, I'm going to turn detuning off for now so that we can really focus on this particular effect. They are two really di dissimilar effects. So all of the orange lines are the plus sevens. As I increase pitch grains, you'll see more orange lines. As I change the interval amount, the colour of that line will also change. We go to green. And there's yellow. So it's just a visual representation of the of the intervals. Finally, in this little cluster of three controls, these controls here, pitch grains, interval and gliding, they're all linked. Pitch grains is the master without which these two really don't have anything else to do. Gliding specifies how often the raised pitch version of the, of the notes, the pitch grain, is going to be portamento effect. So sometimes you'll get an abrupt jump up to the plus seven and sometimes you'll get a glide up to the plus seven. You can hear them. Some of them are jumping straight there. Some of them are sliding. when we get this area over here the focus that's why I brought this particular wave in because it's not just a static pad if I set the uh, granular synthesizer to position it allows us to hone in to focus on a particular part of the wave so let's see that in effect <laughs> We've got direction. So this is the direction of the glide of the pitch grains. So at the moment, all of those glides are going up. Let's set them all to come down instead. Some of them going up, some of them going down, some of them gliding, some of them not gliding. 
So all of that was in gentle mode. That's the granular synthesizer being well behaved. As soon as we go to wild mode, the rule book kind of gets thrown out the window and we get a very different animal. <laughs> basically just sends all of the dials to plus 11. You'll tend to find this is true actually with a lot of um, settings in Omnisphere. Let go of the key, press it again. After you've made changes to the controls, very often you'll hear changes happen in real time, but envelopes have come and gone. So it's, it's always a good idea to just let go of the key and play it again. You'll get the full effect of the sound. I've switched back to speed position now, so we're going to be strobing through the wave. You can hear the dramatic effect of detuning is having. So if you want some of these um, more crazy effects, granular presets is a nice place to go. You only get these four out of the box, but they are really cool and give you good ideas for settings that give you interesting effects. Very cool. Cluster score. Stop, stop. So this is being caused, again, these are all wild mode settings. These four um, options in the presets. Have a play with the knobs uh, to see where you're getting the craziness from. It's all to do with the intensity of this one. Absolute madness. You've also got a grayed out button up here. I've not gone into it because it's for people who owned Omnisphere version one, which I didn't. But if you had presets from Omnisphere one, you can actually load them into this synthesizer using legacy mode, and then none of the new stuff gets used. And that's the granular synthesizer dealt with. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe, hit notifications. I'll catch you for the next episode. Hope to see you then.